Hey everyone, Chris here and welcome to my channel. In today's Five on Friday, I'm going to share with you my next round of five star predictions. So I have quite the eclectic mix of books here and I actually tried to pick some that were a little different. I'm not super confident, but I'm hoping these books all get five stars or at the very least that I love them and I don't have another round like when I only picked book of the month books because, well, that one was not great, but Let's dive into the five books I have picked out. The first one is the one I'm least confident about, and that is Lady Takes the Case by Eliza Casey. This is the first book in a cozy mystery series, and we're following Lady Cecilia Bates. It's England in 1912, and Danby Hall is the only home she's ever known. Despite the rigid rules and her mother, the Countess of Avebury's fervent desire to see her married off, Lady Cecilia cannot imagine life anywhere else. But when hard times hit, the fate of Danby Hall is suddenly in peril. A possible solution arrives in the form of the imperious American heiress, Annabelle Clark. The Earl and Countess of Avebury are determined that Cecilia's brother will win Annabelle's hand in marriage and her fortune along with it. But when a guest dies after sipping from a glass meant for Annabelle, it is clear the Bateses have a more pressing problem, a murderer in their midst. Cecilia sets out to find the culprit with the help of Annabelle's maid and her curiously intelligent cat, Jack. With a stranger lurking in the village and Danby's guests and residents growing restless under questioning, Cecilia knows time is ticking to find the killer and protect her home. I really do love cozy mysteries that have a cat that are historical fiction, so I'm hoping that this one will have all of the elements that'll give it five stars, but it is definitely the one I am least confident about. My second option is The Martian by Andy Weir. I have no idea what this is about. I know that there is a movie that stars Matt Damon that is based on this book. I know that a lot of people really love this book. The reason I am putting this on my list is because Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir was probably my favorite book that I read last year. I loved that book, like, so incredibly much. It has stuck with me. It really stood out among the pack when I was thinking about the over 400 books I read last year. That one was just such an obvious, like, well, yeah, that's one of my favorite books because I really did love it that much. And I am so picky when it comes to sci-fi. And I am hoping that this one manages to capture everything that I loved about Project Hail Mary. And I went into Project Hail Mary completely blind, pretty much. So I kind of want to go into this one just as blind and see if I love it just as much. That is my hope. I'm very excited to get to this and I'm really, really hoping that it has all of the elements that I loved about Project Hail Mary so I can love this one too. I just realized I have these stacked in order from least confident to most confident. So that's interesting. So this is kind of uh, middle of the pack when it comes to my confidence levels. And I chose Eva Evergreen Semi-Magical Witch by Julie Abe. This is a book I've heard compared to Kiki's Delivery Service and I think I gave Kiki's Delivery Service four stars. It wasn't my favorite, but I did really, really enjoy it. And I'm hoping that this one has the thing that was missing from Kiki's Delivery Service that will make this five stars. It says, Eva Evergreen is determined to earn the rank of novice witch before her 13th birthday. If she doesn't, she'll lose her magic forever. For most young witches and wizards, it's a simple test. The only problem, Eva only has a pinch of magic. She summons heads of cabbage instead of flowers and gets a sunburn instead of calling down rain. And to add insult to injury, whenever she overuses her magic, she falls asleep. When she lands in the tranquil coastal town of Auteri, the residents expect a powerful witch, not a semi-magical girl. So Eva comes up with a plan, set up a magical repair shop to help Auteri and prove she's worthy. She may have more blood than magic in her veins, but her semi-magical fixes repair the lives of the townspeople in ways they never could have imagined. But will Eva's bit of magic be enough when the biggest magical storm in history threatens the town she's grown to love? So yeah, definitely based on the description, it gives me Kiki's delivery service vibes. But I am hoping that it has all of the elements of a new favorite middle grade fantasy. And I've heard really good things about it, so I have high hopes. So my next book is Forging Silver into Stars by Bridget Kemmer. This book is a new series from her but it's set in the same world as a curse so dark and lonely and I think it's set like five years after the events of A Vow So Bold and Deadly which was the third book in that trilogy. I've really loved everything I read from Bridget Kemmer so I'm hoping I love this one too. I know a lot of people didn't like the way that trilogy ended but I personally 
I think gave it like four and a half stars, 4.25 stars, somewhere in there. It wasn't my favorite book in the series and it wasn't my favorite book she had ever written, but I didn't hate it as much as other people seem to. And I'm definitely hoping that I like this one better. Um, we're following some characters we met in that story and I think some new ones too. And I'm very curious to see what is going on with this world, what is going on with the characters we know and love from the first trilogy. And I'm hopeful I'm going to love this, but I'm less confident just because, well, I wasn't the biggest fan of the way the first trilogy ended. Though again, I liked it more than most people did, so I'm hoping this one will get five stars. And lastly, the book I'm most confident about, The Castle of Tangled Magic by Sophie Anderson. So I love Sophie Anderson's writing. I really, really love The Girl Who Speaks Bear and The House of Chicken Legs. In this one, we're following 12-year-old Olia, who knows a thing or two about secrets. Her parents are the caretakers of Castle Mila, a soaring palace with golden domes, lush gardens, and countless rooms. Literally countless rooms. There are rooms that appear and disappear, and rooms that have been hiding themselves for centuries. The only person who can access them is Olia. She has a special bond with the castle, and it seems to trust her with its secrets. But then a violent storm rolls in, a storm that skips over the village and surrounds the castle, threatening to tear it apart. While taking cover in a rarely used room, Olia stumbles down a secret passage that leads to a part of Castle Mila she's never seen before, a strange network of rooms that hide the secret to the castle's past, and the truth about who's trying to destroy it. So this sounds like it's going to have everything I love in a middle grade fantasy. Again, I know I like her writing style, so I'm not worried about that part. I also know that technically her books are all standalones, but there are hints to previous books in this one. Like, I believe in The Girl Who Speaks Bear, there's references to the house with chicken legs. And then I believe in this one, there's references to both of those books. So you don't have to read them in order, but you also gain something if you choose to. I am really hoping I love this book as much as I loved the first two and I'm very curious to see what those little hints are that mention previous books. So these are the books I've chosen for this round of five star predictions. I would love to know a book you're hoping to get to in the near future that you think will get five stars. All of my social media including my discord is linked below if you'd like to come chat with me. If you've made it this far in the video leave me star emojis, like this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!